vlog here down in Dallas, Texas, uh, going to the vault conference, been trying to vlog some of the process and whatnot. Overall, going pretty well. Uh, we didn't really check out last night in our last vlog, but uh, that's because we were so exhausted. Yesterday was a long day, like a 12 hour day. And it was like beyond 12 hours when you include like getting up and getting ready. Like the actual seminar itself was like 12 and a half hours, 13 hours or whatever. So uh, like I said, long day, uh, kind of a challenging day. We didn't get to eat dinner last night. So well, we didn't get to eat dinner at dinner time. We didn't, we didn't actually get to eat our dinner till like 10 p.m., which kind of sucks. By the time we got back to here, it was like 11, plus then we had to wake back up at like seven. And here we are. So I'll show y'all what I'm wearing today. Uh, today, we get to wear I Am An Entrepreneur shirt, and I actually wore it yesterday as well. But uh, I'm rocking it on top of my dress shirt. What do you think? Yesterday's looked a lot better. This one don't look near as good. This one looks a little bit more, uh, I don't know what you call it. Looks baseball-y, I shall say. Something like that. And mine's just like literally a dress. And then I got a entrepreneur shirt over it because they said business casual on the email which they didn't say that we had to wear an entrepreneur shirt on Friday. So I didn't bring no jeans. All I did is bring dress up clothes because I thought it was gonna be business entire the whole entire time, which in this case, it's not today. So I kind of made a skirt out of this dress, right? It's kind of popping me, but hold up. And then I got these like maroon heels on. Uh, I literally got them for like maybe $16 at Payless. Oh, $7 at Payless because they're just going out of business and they're really cute, I think. Yeah, they're like 75% off or something like that or like 90% off crazy shit. I got like four pairs for $40. Literally shelves are empty at the store. Try to maybe talk with people, I don't know. I'm so introverted, that's one thing that I'm really trying to focus on is like communicate with people that I don't know. Uh, I do well with like after conversations been started, I think, but it's like mainly struggling with like initiating a conversation or whatnot. Uh, that's the main difficult part for me. I think a lot of people struggle with that, but like it's like, yeah, it sucks, dude. Let me know if you got any tips. Put them down in the comments below. Uh, like I, you know, I just feel like I should walk away like feeling like I met everybody at this thing. And I think that's like one of the main takeaways with doing an event like this. Like, it's probably more important than whoever it is that's going to be there speaking. It's the people that you're around and the potential business opportunities and whatnot. Uh, people may be doing the exact same thing you're doing that can help you with some advice. There might be uh, people who could be partners in your business or people that could be uh, collaboratives or vendors or uh, just all kinds of different various uh, things. So I just think that it's highly important to, to be able to network and, you know, uh, like yesterday, one of the big things that I took away was like, it only takes one person to completely change your entire business and, and one relationship to like alter everything and give you the contacts you need or give you an employee you need. And it could be anything, it could be, you know, it could be anything and it could be at any time. It might be a year from now, it might be tomorrow, it might be 10 years from now, you never know. So hopefully that business tip was helpful if you do any type of business, anything. Also just in general in life, like, like you know, one day you might be nice to some person, they end up being like your manager at your next job or something, and boom, you just you just made it, dude, because you was nice one day. Oh, I got this. 
low calorie cold brew. Uh, I gotta get my caffeine as well. Got the shrimp fajita as well. But I also got a chicken fajita. Check these things out, they're pretty bomb diggity. There's a chicken one. Boom. But yeah. Actually, it's a really good poverty option. Uh, lunch for both of us is like 20 bucks with the coffees and the everything, which is like, I think better than McDonald's prices, especially for like the quality of food and meat that you get. Yeah. What is going on, y'all? Hopefully, y'all can hear me. Figured I'd go ahead and give y'all a fitness tip, a fitness tip. I'm here in the bulk conference, and I figured it'd be a cool idea to do like a little fitness tip while in the while in the bulk conference, right? It only makes sense. So, uh, one of the main things is like when you're traveling like this, uh, I would go ahead and suggest whatever it is that you're doing that you go to the extreme of that. So whether you're dieting or whether you're uh, whether you're cutting or whether you're bulking, uh, go to the extreme. So like in my case, cutting. Make sure I'm way under eating versus overeating. That way I'm still seeing progress and if I start to notice too many adverse uh, effects, then I'll go ahead and, and taper back on that and won't quite eat. And then if you're bulking, just eat more, you know, especially if you're a person who's a hard gainer and struggle with uh, being able to put on weight. Now me personally, even if I was gaining, I wouldn't have to go to the extremes because I put on weight very easily. Uh, it's taking off weight that I have an issue with. So something that I definitely need to do is go to the extreme of taking weight off. And uh, or this one thing I have to go to the extreme too is, is cutting back on my food to make sure that, especially when my macros are jacked up, that I'm able to stay on track with everything. So hopefully that was a helpful tip for you guys. I haven't really gave y'all many tips since we've been on this trip. But hey, been busy, been working, been grinding. Back to it. We got us some more of this Mexican food. It's like a Mexican fast food joint. I think it's called Lorado Taco or something like that. Isn't that what it is? Low but like, low yeah, it's like super legit. Like one of these is like 220 calories. Like that's what I love to see, especially like at a lower calorie ratio. Uh, a lower calorie so I can do like multiple so like maybe this one meal I can eat two or I can eat three or I can eat four and I can inc increment my meals a little bit easier than having to like buy one and only be able to eat half of it because like a full one wouldn't fit in my macros. Generally I can eat in 200 calorie increments and be completely fine. Another thing that's super awesome is it has a nice uh, macro ratio to it so it's going to be pretty high in protein because all the meats. Uh, the meats are probably not going to be the highest of quality, so they're going to have a little bit of fats in them. Get some carbs from the tortilla shell, which they cook right there fresh from the dough, which is super sick for a fast food joint. Uh, super cheap, really, because it's like $3 per taco. Like, for both of us, it's only 15 bucks, and it's solid enough food. It's not like Taco Bell quality. It's not even like Taco John quality. It's like even better than that, especially for the price. Like, to get this same quality at, like, Taco Bell, you'd be, this is like their like $5 XL steak burrito or whatever. Like you can have this thing completely loaded up and like almost be as good as Chipotle. Like it's it's pushing the limits and I, I even think that it has Chipotle beat because of the friggin' price. Like you can't beat it. It is currently like 6 o'clock-ish, isn't it? Yeah, 6, 6.30, 7. Yeah, so it's about, about 7 o'clock. Probably gonna hit a little bit of a workout session. There's a gym downstairs. I think we're gonna check it out and see if, uh, see how legit it is. And if it's legit enough, I'll go ahead and record my film session there. Uh, if not, probably not gonna record a plan of fitness just because I, I just, I'm not comfortable really recording out of town, especially in this area because it's like, the areas are kind of sketchy and you just never know. You might look like a target getting out of your car. And from past experience in the past life that I used to live, uh, yeah, people, people be looking for targets sometimes. So, you don't want to look like a target. Not, not a fitness tip, but it is a tip to life. Very important tip to life. I'm gonna shut up, get off of here, eat my steak, eat my corn la 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 or whatever it is, which is like a spicy pork one, and then uh, my shrimp, my shrimp taco. Alright, so it's time to crush this workout. Uh, mainly gonna be focusing on upper for myself. I am gonna do probably a little bit of legs, so definitely a priority for this evening to at least get some volume in, at least like three to five sets, something like that, at a minimum. Uh, yeah, main focus is gonna be back. 
It looks like not seen any black pool or uh, seated row machine, which is such balls. Cause that's my main target right now. Is I can't, if I can't find a seated row. I'm gonna do the lat pull down machine. And there's also uh, looks like pull up grips over there that I might hit. We'll see. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get to the workout. <laughs> sets of these each uh, today's kind of like my extra day since I'm minimalist style working out right now and only hitting like two gym sessions a week uh, this is actually gonna be considered my third gym session a week and I try to get this one in just because I want to get more volume in more frequency mainly frequency but uh, one thing that I noticed when I was doing these that at the top of the movement when I stretched out all the way when my arms stretched out I don't know if it's because I haven't been doing this movement very much or what it is but my, I basically sort of have muscle spasms where like my lat and my lumbar meet and uh, it's definitely causes some issues. So I, I'm not an advocate of pushing through pains like that. I just completely want to give up. I tried out some different stuff, lowered the weight, just to try to get a feel of what was causing this to happen. And I, I definitely came to the conclusion that it was me being stretched out at the top with two arms. So I was able to get in some more volume doing them single-handed. Uh, because not by doing them single-handed, I could rotate my body up a little bit. I don't know if it's kind of hard to see. But I could rotate my body up a little bit and then bring back down, contract all together, versus being both arms and back stretched all the way out. For some reason, it's just causing my muscles to want to spasm. As a matter of fact, for some odd reason, when I was doing some bicep curls just a few seconds ago, uh, I started getting some more muscle spasms in my back. But I'm gonna go ahead and take y'all to one of the next movements, one of the things that I'm trying to add to my workouts just because I like them because it's a dynamic part of the routine. It, it lets me get in a little bit more volume while still being able to target some of my main uh, muscle groups that need to be targeted while still being able to get enough volume in on each muscle group uh, to be worth it and follow the channel then you've seen this movement done before I don't know if I've done it in any YouTube videos I've definitely done it on my Facebook though uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that movement now so hopefully uh, you can find that movement useful enjoyable the main thing I get out of that movement is more of an enjoyable enjoyable movement makes you work a little bit harder I'm not sure if it's the best movement to do while I'm at a cut uh, and the main reason is because it's so exhausting it takes a lot of self-control and a lot of mind muscle connection and just overall connection with your body because uh, there's a lot of cues in there that are actually very important with this movement you know I People who are not advanced could definitely do the movement, but they're not gonna get the best bang for their buck with the movement, unless they're doing certain cues along with the movement. Like, one thing that I try to do, is I try to start rotating my hand. When I'm in this, after I do my curl, and I rotate my hand to go up to this position here, one thing that I'm trying to do is start rotating my hand first, so that way when I reach here, I'm all the, my hand's already rotated all the way. I don't wanna get here and then still be rotating. Uh, and it's something hard to actually do. So it's like you have to lead with this just very slightly. Lead with the rotation of your wrist just a little bit. And that helps add a little bit more tension to your delt whenever you're going around to the to the shoulder press uh, portion of the movement. So I'm gonna get in some more sets of this. And probably a little bit of bicep curls, maybe some tricep push downs, uh, maybe some shoulder flies, I don't know and then we'll call this thing a night. But like I said, I'll probably get a few more sets of this just because I want to get some more volume. But depending on how hard it is on me, I definitely want to make sure I get it, my biceps wore out because I think it's one of my biggest lagging body parts and just my arms in general, shoulders as well. But that's why I'm including this movement is because this movement will target your biceps, triceps, and delts, AKA shoulders. All right, y'all, so I figured I'd give you a quick physique update, let y'all know what all I did. Really, I just did the workouts that you've seen, and then also I did some abs. Uh, continued on with the sets that I did for about maybe like five sets or so. Overall, I think uh, this lighting sucks for one, for two. Um, 
I definitely really haven't made any progress at all over the course of this uh, vacation here, this little mini vacation thing. Maybe, maybe some muscular gains. I mean, I feel like, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's just hard to tell, and I'm definitely, my weight's not showing it, and I'm not in like a depleted state, so I kind of got to be back in a depleted state to be able to tell where I'm going to be at uh, weight-wise and to know whether I made any progress because my weight fluctuates so much so easily. I literally can jump up five, seven, eight pounds just from being in a deficit for a period of time and then going back to eating again. So. It's something that I have to keep in mind for myself and something that everybody else needs to keep in mind because it's very, very important and it can happen to a lot of people and it will happen to pretty much everybody at some extent. Uh, it just depends on your body, your makeup, genetic makeup, whatnot, how much effect you'll have by being in a deficit versus not being in a deficit. I think we're going to wrap this one up, call it a night. Uh, pretty solid workout, especially for a Friday night workout. That uh, Am I making any Gonna wrap this thing up, call it a night. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for viewing. If you haven't already hit that subular button, go and hit that subular button. And I'll catch you on the next one.